we are live for another book chat. So if you're new to our book club, we are a band of readers reading a couple books together once a month. So the last Thursday of the month at 9 p.m. Eastern time, we get together and discuss the books. So we have six ladies chatting live, and then we also have an audience who will be joining and commenting and... Yeah, we usually give everyone a couple minutes to join, and then we will get started with our book chat. Because the <laughs> the control room takes a minute to catch up. Just um, so the last Thursday of the month at 9 p.m. Eastern time, we get together and discuss the books. So we have six. Okay, so the washroom is now live. <laughs> Perfect. I always forget to turn it off when I when it goes. Oh, Alexis is here. Hey, Alexis. All right, I think that we are okay to go ahead and start with bios. So just like in previous months, we're just going to do a quick one-line bio just so everyone has a chance to kind of say hello to our book chatter panel. So I am Lisa Marie. I work for an IT company in LA during the day and I do paper and glam at night. Uh, usually we've been doing our favorite book right now and it doesn't have to be one that you're necessarily reading but maybe one you're excited to read. So I'm going to go in that direction this time because I actually am so excited. Amazon just delivered the new Shauna Nyquist book which I pre-ordered. So this is Savor. This is going to be the Paper and Glam Bible Study for 2016. So I am a huge fan of Shauna. She's my very favorite author and... Yeah, I'm so excited to tackle her devotional next year, but I got it nice and early just because I want to support her, and I'm sure she wants to be on the New York Times bestsellers list. So, yeah, I got it nice and early, but for those of you who like to plan ahead, like me, that will be the devotional for 2016, because if you've been following along, I actually did just start a Bible study um, with... Tabitha and Sarah and Katrina and Lauren and all of the, the paper and glam readers who would like to to join. So that is the story with Saver. Katrina, did you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your favorite book right now? Yeah, sure. I'm Katrina. I live in St. Paul, uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and uh, I'm a captionist and a photographer. And my favorite book is actually going to be a series this time, and it is going to be uh, the Women's Murder Club books from James Patterson. I'm such a sucker for James Patterson books because they're so perfect for like sitting outside and reading. So that would be my recommendation going into spring and summer weather to just sit outside and enjoy an easy read. Yeah. Lauren is a new book chatter, so. We, we lost a book chatter with the time zone change, so Lauren will be joining us from here on out. So I was excited when she reached out and wanted to join us. So Lauren, you want to do a quick kind of one-line elevator speech? Yeah, absolutely. Th First of all, thank you so much for including me. Um, I love this community so much, so it's, it's really a privilege to be a part of it. Um, my name is Lauren Lambert. I actually also live in Denver, Colorado. Um, with my husband and our giant Alaskan Malamute Ginger. She's my baby. <laughs> and uh, I very quickly, um, I went to design school in San Diego. That's kind of where I grew up. And then I got offered a nanny position with the Denver Nuggets, which took me away from that. So that's what I've been doing um, for the past eight years. And I retired when I got married. So. Currently, I'm just freelancing small work, and I'm a stay-at-home wife, so I, which I really love. Um, the hardest part about this <laughs> was, um, are we saying our favorite book right now? Okay. Um, I racked my brain to figure out what to say for my favorite book because, like all of you, I'm an avid reader. So um, I just went with one that is really close to my heart, and I'm sure you guys have read it, but it's Wonder. Um, it's just an amazing, it's a, it is actually a children's book, but it's just so uplifting and 
Um, I think everyone should read it. Every parent should read it to their child. And with all the bad stuff that goes on in the world, I just think it's really uplifting and encouraging and thought provoking. Hi guys, I'm Tabitha, and I'm a stay-at-home mother and wife in Maryland. Um, and no, I'm not close to Baltimore, in case anyone's <laughs> wondering. But um, the book that I am going to recommend is, I don't know if you guys can see it, Ooh, there we go, Ray Badbury, Fahrenheit, 451, read this, I really enjoyed it, I recommend that. Um, part of the glam family, as we like to call ourselves with Lisa Marie. I uh, like to um, do my planner and uh, read and Bible study with all you ladies. So, how's everybody? All right, Sarah. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm in Oregon and um, I do training and development for a local Oregon-based nonprofit. Um, I'm a wife, a stepmom, and a fur mom to a giant uh, Great Dane that hopefully won't bust in on us again this month, like she did last month. Um, and let's see. So I kind of I just went and like scanned my bookshelf like right before I logged on for like oh I want to pick a new book and I remembered. So it's been years. This can you guys see? So it's The Covenant by Beverly Lewis. So I haven't read this since shortly after high school, but it sparked a, a, sparked a small obsession with like all things Amish in uh, my, my young life. So super obsessed. It's a whole series. It's Abram's Daughters. I think there's five books. I mean, totally one of those series that I think a couple of times I threw the book because I was so frustrated at like you know, that that overview look that you get as a reader of like, oh, why is all this going awry? And just wanting to, like, be able to talk to people. So um, definitely a good quick read. It's, I think they're, I mean, it's heavy material, but could totally be a summer read because you're just totally engrossed and turning pages like mad. Perfect. Well, we usually do what's your favorite book is kind of our icebreaker intro question, but if you guys can think of another one that you may want us to answer in the future, I'm not married to that one, but I were about reading all books, so definitely I was just saying on the Paper and Glam book club page today, you know, don't feel like we can only discuss the monthly reads, you know, if there's books that you're reading and loving, I'm sure the whole community would like to know, you know, what else is on your bookshelf, whether you're reading that now or you're looking forward to reading it, so yeah, I guess we will jump right into the first question. So the first question is always our softball, and that is how many stars did you rate the book? And I guess I didn't do a, I didn't do a great job with my intro. I didn't say what we're reading, although you can probably tell from the YouTube video. We're reading Diane von Thurstenberg's The Woman I Wanted to Be. So I definitely have a confession. I did not finish the book. I was on a mission to finish Vanity Fair. And for those of us who bit that off, it was, which Tabitha, Sarah, and Katrina, I know you guys did. And it was a quarterly classic. But it was a beast and a half to conquer. My, my copy was, gosh, I want to say over 700 pages. So I just finished that this week. And I am not quite done with DBF. But my impression so far is it's I would say it's actually my favorite official read so far, but I'm like teetering between three and four stars. I would say that it started off really strong, and I'm kind of answering two a little bit here too, but it's getting a little bit woo-woo for me right now. Um, like life is love, and love is life, and love is nature, and I'm I'm a little more analytical, so that, <laughs> that doesn't quite um, over super well with me. I like things to be a little bit more linear. So um, yeah, but it's it's been really good. I think it's the strongest book we've read so far. We've read a lot of memoirs this year, just because I was inspired to really focus on women uh, writers, and just because we're a community of of women. But um, yeah, this this memoir I would say is probably the strongest. But yeah, you guys who have read it, my faithful readers, will have to tell me um, what you thought by the end of the book. So I would also, I'm also teetering between three and four stars, probably on the high end of three, obviously, but um, I enjoyed it. I also kind of got ho-hummed in the middle, but that's kind of question number two. Um, 
It was also my favorite main read. It's my favorite memoir that we've read so far. I just thought it was better, well, more, I don't know. I liked your writing style much better than I've liked um, the three previous reads, uh, and I felt like it was a little bit easier for me to digest, more kind of up my alley as far as the kind of person that I wanted to read from. Um, so that's just kind of my overall liking so far of it. Yeah, I in the beginning it felt like um, it, I resonated with it so much just because my family is Jewish and so it started out so strong for me and the stories with her mother and uh, the theme of her mother throughout the book um, I'm very close with my mother so that resonated for me as well um, and then of course you know like you guys were <laughs> in the middle uh, I started feeling that a little bit too I, I think I gave this about three and a half stars um, it is my favorite memoir that we've read so far. Um, it's It was very complicated for me to read about someone that you think you know and, and then all of these stories that when you hear from her, um, there's things that I didn't really agree with from her perspective and so that was kind of hard but at the same time that's also what I loved about it because she is a complicated person and like all of us and I think that that was a huge theme throughout the whole book. Yeah I gave the book a three. Um, like I said I agree with you guys it started off strong. Um, really interesting when she was talking about her mother. Um, but then, like, when I got, like, in the middle, I, you know, I, I don't know if it was there, exactly the middle, but around the point where she started doing a lot of talking about some of the names, I don't, I don't know why they do that with the names. Maybe it's because of their industry, but for just a regular person like me who doesn't know anything about fashion or anything about her, it was just like, yeah, 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 speed it up. Um, but I did find it interesting, and I, um, um, it made me curious about her and some of the history of her and, and the wrap dress. So I had to Google, and, and then I was like, oh, she's really led an interesting life. So I did start to enjoy it. So I would say, like, overall, getting all the way through, I would give it a three. Three stars. Yeah, I think I'm at a, a solid three, maybe three and a quarter. Um, I think thought that, yeah, I really, I mean, the stuff in the beginning about her mom was truly powerful and um, just so awesome that, you know, that's the woman she wanted to be. And then, you know, despite some of her mother's shortcomings, you know, I just, I really, I really appreciated that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess I knew about the wrap dress and it was interesting. I guess it was interesting seeing how it dropped off and then came back mm -hmm. as, you know, as an icon and, um, or as a fashion icon. And I really, I guess mostly, I think what gave, would bump it higher than a three was I listened to it. Um, I read a little bit and listened, mostly listened, and then would go back to, um, it's kind of, it's a weird thing, like I would go back to look at the people's names because I loved hearing her say people's names like in her accent and then like, um, you know, like, or with like the French accent to it as well. Like it was just like, oh, oh cool. So I went back and like looked at people's names and I liked the pictures that she included in the book. Um, I thought that kind of added a nice touch. So I think that was, um, and despite all of that, I mean, it probably there were a lot of things that I could say I disliked maybe, but I do, um, I think it was probably one of the better um, memoirs that we've read thus far. I just, yeah, I, I mean, I liked her, I liked her story, um, but there were parts that just weren't for me. Yeah, I like how you phrased that, Sarah. I appreciate that, you know, we try to be respectful of the authors because clearly they're putting themselves out there and that's not an easy task by any means, so... Yeah, um, some of the books haven't been our favorite, which is natural. We're all going to have a different experience. And Bella Blogger on Twitter, I'm actually watching the Twitter feed if you guys are, are live tweeting, which is awesome. She said she actually really liked the life is love is life, life is love message. So we're all going to experience it totally different. So don't feel like, you know, we need to form a consensus by any means. This is just a, an open discussion because I personally think everything is better when done in community, whether you're reading or growing with the Lord or, or whatever, so don't feel like, you know, uh, 
feel free to voice a contrarian opinion. So Alexis asked a really great question, and Alexis is Miss Trenchcoat on um, uh, excuse me, on YouTube, I'm like reading and talking here. She, so she didn't read the book either, and she wanted to know how much did Diane talk about Egon, did I say that right, in the development of her brand, because he was a really central part of the DVF brand for development. Um, I think that she, she, their relationship is so um, prominent throughout the book that you would, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but she didn't say so much about him being in the product and development as the encouragement that he gave her to do what she felt she needed to do in all aspects, I think, of her life. I yeah. think she... Go ahead, Sarah. Okay. Um, I think also just by providing her the lifestyle, it seemed like that was a huge, like, it propelled her forward quite a bit because like her being a princess von Furstenberg really helped with her branding and notoriety and I mean I think she definitely struggled and like had to hustle to get her brand known but I think just him being who he was did help with her you know gaining some like relevance in society and creating that brand Yeah, so another uh, comment that is from Twitter is that most of us really enjoyed reading or listening Diane read the book in her own voice. So that's something I definitely want to point out. I know we have been talking about that, especially with the Amy Poehler book, but again with Diane. I think that definitely added an element for me, just hearing her read it in her own voice. I have recently in the past, well, I wouldn't say I've recently discovered Audible, but I've recently fallen in love with Audible and really with the memoirs just found the dimension that you get from hearing the author read the book in her own voice. I tried audiobooks in the past. Granted, they weren't read by the author, but I just thought that wasn't for me. I don't even do ebooks. I'm like super old school. So yeah, I definitely agree. Hearing her accent, it just sounds so elegant, elegant, and it's just it just added yeah so much dimension to the to the book. So I definitely agree with you, Bella Blogger. That's definitely definitely something that enhanced my experience. So it sounds like from the comments, most of us felt like it was about a three-star read. I Definitely her story is so compelling. I mean, I knew that her mother was an Auschwitz survivor, and I knew, you know, she's like the original Glampire Builder, right? You know, she, like, I think Chanel is probably the only person that I can think of that really built up a, a business before that was common. You know, like, women didn't run companies in, you know, really until... I feel like almost my generation, you know, where we see like Sheryl Sandenberg and Marissa Mayer and, you know, these these female CEOs. But so it's always fascinating to me. So I was really excited to read this book and hear her story. So uh, the next question kind of ties in with the first one. So, um, yeah, feel free to kind of color outside the lines here. But the next question is, how did you experience the book? So I kind of already answered. And since I haven't finished it yet, that's that's about all I have to say. If Katrina wants to take it away. Yeah, so I um, I just read all of the books. I have a hard time um, listening and comprehending things. It just doesn't work for me, and so I just read them, and I feel like it, it works for my brain really well, and it just, I don't know, I think there's a different element to actually reading physically. It's much different than just listening. Just It challenges me more in a different way. That was confusing. But, so I read it. Uh, I also like the beginning. Um, the middle, like Tabitha was talking about, the names kind of, it was just pages of names, it seemed like, and I I try to keep up with fashion names, but it was just a lot. So I definitely skimmed that, and then she got me back at the end. Um, I don't remember the chapter, like how the chapters are broken up, if that makes sense, but I think it was the beauty section that I think midway through kind of got me back. Um, I also didn't know that she built and sold and built and sold all these companies. I didn't know that she had a cosmetics company. Um, I didn't know that she was on QVC. I didn't know that she was even with, is it his name, Barry, that's like a TV executive. I didn't know that. Um, I did, she does have a reality TV show um, called The House of DBF, I believe, um, which I've watched a few episodes of where she tries to find like um, a spokesperson girl that's like the DBF girl, and so I went back and watched a few episodes after I'd finished the book to just kind of um, see like what was happening, and 
it was really interesting. Dan stopped. Sorry, my husband's watching the draft, and the Vikings just picked somebody. So, sorry. <laughs> uh, so I, I liked watching like what she was looking for after I knew who she was and the woman that she was. Uh, so that was really interesting. And I have a lot of favorite quotes, which we'll get to a little bit later. But I I liked it. The middle was hard. The names were hard. I got a little caught up with like just kind of the repeating the time jumps bothered me a little bit. I was like, who is she with? Is she married to Barry yet or is she not? Like, what's happening? Did her mother die yet or did she not? How old are her kids? So that was a little bit difficult, but it seems like every memoir we've read does that. Um, so it's definitely not like just a small sector of the market does that. So that was that was another hard part for me. Um, but I, yeah, that's what I thought of it. Lauren, what did you think? Yeah, so I listened to it entirely, um, and to me, listening to it was such a great experience because it really felt like listening to your grandmother tell you the story of her life and all the stories. And I love that sort of storytelling, campfire type atmosphere, and that's what I really felt that I got from it in that aspect of it. So that experience was really cool, um, and I love her accent and just you know like you guys are saying how she pronounced the names um, and I'm not I'm not gonna lie I I didn't mind the name dropping <laughs> so much just because um, I pre I keep up pretty well with pop culture and so um, to sort of say oh my gosh she had Madonna at a party and whoa like what was it like at studio 54 and that she was a part of that scene was was kind of interesting to me um, my mom used to wear the wrap dress all the time when I was growing up and I remember looking at her and just thinking how beautiful she looked and so it was it was if um, I don't know how to explain the experience but it was really neat because it, I just could connect that with my mother and memories that I have of her growing up and I thought that that was very cool um, one thing it's you know I <laughs> I didn't agree with her uh, outlook all the time, but I think that that's what makes us all different and beautiful and wonderful, and I appreciate that she does not seem like a judgmental person at all. So that as I was reading it, I was just trying to be as open-minded as I could when she was talking about her love affairs and her promiscuousness and her promiscuity, I guess I should say. So that was a little interesting to me, but of course we all have our own you know, way of life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would. Um, I listened to the book the entire the entire time. Like I said, um, I agree with everyone else about loving her accent. Um, the beginning of the story being very compelling. Her talking about, um, you know, would love to know more about her mother's story. Actually, just from a history standpoint, um, but. Just thinking about the fact that, you know, her being a princess, like, that had to be, you know, you can't go wrong with that when you're trying to start a brand. So, but I also like the fact that she really fought to still have her own identity even in that marriage um, and that she still was a woman with a great idea. Like, how many times do we see something and think, well, we have a great idea, but how do we how many people actually make it into a dress, like to see the ballerina wrap and see someone wearing it and go, hey, that might be a nice dress. And it's this dress that we still wear today. And like, um, I was, I was, I'm not in the fashion, but I was really intrigued about how she went through that whole artistic process or, um, and actually getting people to want to to buy her dress or believe believe in her as a woman especially for the time period um, so I, I say I experienced it like it was a good experience only because I was so drawn into some of the history because I enjoy history um, so the part that it was fashion you know didn't really bother me because it was so intriguing so I actually called some of my um, you know fashion family friends who were um, like diva-ish in the 70s and asked them about the, the wrap dress and they they um one of my aunts actually says she still has one and I'm like really like in her closet she still has one like that's phenomenal to me but I will say that um, it made me have a different perspective about fashion because I'm not a fashion person but a perspective like oh she remembers what she wore on 
a uh, special occasion. I was like, oh, that's great. I, I don't have a clue what I wore on special occasions except for looking at photographs. So it um, gave me a different perspective about people who are really into fashion and think about it. It's not just vanity. That is actually, okay, this is how I felt in a particular um, moment. And this is why I keep the dress because it reminds me of this. I'm like, oh, so I kind of get a little more about fashion now. So um, I appreciated that aspect of the book um, just to kind of open my eyes about why do people kind of cling to their clothing. <laughs> but um, I would say that um, I'm happy that I experienced the book and um, that it was from a genre that I would have never, you know, never picked up on my own. Um, yeah, I, again, like everybody else, I really, I really loved it. I found, um, listening to it was, like, it was just, it, like, lulled me a lot because she's so, like, methodical in her speech and really measured, and I am, that's just not how I talk. Like, I'm super fast and I'm always ramped up and trying to, like, catch myself and, like, slow back down so people can understand me. So I caught myself a couple of times, like, picking up the book and, like, reading ahead of her because I was like, oh, let's get to the point. Like, come on, let's, let's talk a little bit faster. Um, but at the same time, like, I really enjoyed that, and it, <clears throat> I don't know, like, lent an air of dignity like she's just such a like refined lady you know and um, I don't know I just I I enjoyed that she was very thoughtful and measured in the way she wrote her book and then the way she read it and expressed things and um, yeah so I just I really enjoyed it I mean other than like sometimes because I'm a fast talker myself um, wanting her to speed up a bit uh, so this is probably, <laughs> for us who are type awesome, and I felt the same way. I was like, okay, you know, she speaks with such eloquence, and I talk really fast, so to a fault. So when I'm speaking in public, and even right now, I have to slow myself down. So uh, on Audible, this is terrible. You can actually choose your speed. So yeah. I... <laughs> so I, cool. I was reading at, like, 1.5 speed just to, like speed it up a little bit, and if you haven't tried Audible and you want to, there's a link down below for two free audiobooks so you can see if it's for you, but yeah, I definitely found myself <laughs> listening it to it at a higher speed just to try to get through it, so yeah, uh, I mean, not that I like wanted, not that it was bad and I wanted to get through it, I just, I'm the same way, I'm kind of like, alright, got stuff to do, so yeah, on Twitter there was a couple comments, and if you guys are on Twitter and you want to engage that way, you can either tweet to at Paper and Glam or hashtag Paper and Glam Book Club. I'm looking at both, so I have like multiple screens going here. And uh, so Bella agreed with you, Lauren. She liked the names because I, as I knew going into the book, you know, Diane von Furstenberg was like a muse for Andy Warhol and, you know, so many iconic people. And so I guess in this book it didn't really hinder my experience just because I was so curious about, you know, her husband's and, you know, being, like, what is, like, the Jet Set Life, that's what she's known for, that's what she really built a, br a brand on, is first it was the Jet Set Life, and then it was being an independent from that and kind of rising above that, so, of course, that that's super inspiring and very similar to, you know, Chanel in, in some ways and Tabitha. One of the reasons that I love Chanel is she, like, revolutionized the fashion industry, so she was the first one to come out with pants and the first one to really gravitate to creating clothes and fashion based on how people feel. And Diane von Thurstenberg was like the, the kind of the, the person I saw as like taking, kind of finishing that legacy. So that's definitely was a big, a big part of the book for me as well. So creative Heidi said that she liked learning that she based her empire on love. And yeah, I definitely agree. She kind of followed her heart and didn't really worry too much about the rest. So I definitely agree there. So the next question is, what is your favorite quote, or what is your favorite part of the book? So if, you know, it doesn't have to be a quote if you didn't pick out a quote, but my favorite, or the, the quote that I related to most, was on page 39, so it's 39 and 41, or excuse me, 40, and she's talking about how, well, first she sounded exactly like Sarah Jessica Parker in Sex and the City, if anyone is a Sex and the City fan. I was like, I feel like these are direct quotes from... <laughs> The show, which yes. is like, 
the most important relationship you have is the one with yourself. And I was like, that was totally on Sex and the City. So I thought that was really funny. I would have thought the editors would have like changed that up a little bit. But um, not that it's like a super original statement, but um, I just thought, I was like, I feel like I'm listening to Carrie Bradshaw all of a sudden. So she said, I was lucky to start a relationship with myself very early in life. I'm not sure why, maybe because I had no siblings until the age of six and I was alone a lot, or maybe because I was taught from an early age to be responsible for myself and for my actions. But then she talks about how she kind of developed this relationship with herself and how she wrote stories and journaled a lot and how her diary or her journal was like her her best friend and her refuge. And then she goes on to say that um, now she seldom writes in her her diary that she's replaced it with like a visual diary. She says, I carry a camera with me everywhere and take pictures of what I want to store in my memory. People, nature, objects, architecture, often I use those photos for inspiration. I also learned how critical it is for me to have time alone, to recharge and strengthen that inner connection. It's easy to lose oneself when you're with people all the time. I need silence and solitude to create a buffer against the daily barrage of information and challenges. I use these moments to reconnect with myself and build my strength. So first, I love how she connected with herself through writing because that's 100% true of me. And when I started, you know, I kind of like found myself through Paper and Glam, which I've been writing since 2008 so there's a lot of like angsty early 20s stuff on there and just kind of like my journey with the Lord and so I really that's kind of how things came together for me so I also related to that and then just needing to be alone because I'm actually an introvert which is crazy for most of you I know when I told Alexis she like fell out of her chair because I love community I love connecting with people you know I talk so much right so uh, but really I recharge by being alone and that's how you define whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. So obviously you would think DVF is an extrovert as well, but if you recharge by being alone, then that makes you an introvert. So I really related to that, especially when I had my last job being on call all the time and just constantly being on. Like I was always in the on position. I really realized how important it was to unplug and reconnect with myself because I literally like, couldn't catch up with, like, my body couldn't catch up with my spirit, I felt like. So, you know, I definitely unplug for at least some portion of the day, most days. So I really, I really related to that and just kind of related to her journey and how she kind of found her strength by developing her relationship with herself. So I have, like, pages of quotes saved, and I've been sitting here, like, trying to pick out my favorite one, and it's been really hard. So I'm going to pick two. Um, one of them's right at the beginning. Um, Never, ever blame others for what befalls you, no matter how horrible it might be. Trust you and only you to be responsible for your own life. So I love that one just because it was so short and so poignant and just so... Um, relatable and powerful but obvious at the same time which is I think the best part of like favorite quotes that are so memorable is like they're so obvious like why haven't we thought of that before like why didn't I say that you know um, and then oh geez um, I'm gonna pick this little poem that she has and I don't remember if it's from her or her mom so if anybody knows for sure, feel free to tell me. Um, it's 17% into the book if anybody else read it electronically. Um, it says, beware of your thoughts for they become words. Beware of your words for they become actions. Beware of your actions for they become habits. Beware of your habits for they become character. Beware of your character for it becomes your destiny. So I loved how it ties like the littlest thought in your head can become something that's a huge part of your life. Was it in Amy Poehler's book where she was talking about like imagining something mean to happening to somebody or something like that, right? So it's kind of that in a more eloquent way. So I really enjoyed um, the, that part of the book. And then all the ones about love and life and everything else. So, so since I um listen to it, I cannot find any page number, so, and I'm probably going to butcher the quote, so I really, really apologize uh, first and foremost, but I think the one thing that I would, um, there was, I mean, it's really a book full of quotes so, um, and life lessons, and that's what I sort of mean by, like, listening to your grandmother giving you all these life lessons, and uh, the one thing I would say is uh, what her mother taught her, and that you never know that the worst thing that you think is happening to you could end up being the best and I'm sure that all of us were so moved by that story um, of her mother in the camp and 
it's, I am a huge planner. I like to know what's happening right now, what's going to happen in 10 minutes, what's going to happen. And, and life is not like that. It's We don't have control over that. And sometimes when things don't go according to my plan, I think, oh my gosh, it's tragic. And it's really not. You know, it's really not that tragic. And um, sometimes it ends up being a good thing. And we all, you know, we all hear those quotes like when one door closes, another one opens. And I think it's not until you live that, that you, it sort of starts to resonate with, at least that's how I feel. And then um, I did look up this quote because um, I really liked, um, I liked the theme of strength throughout the book and how she talked a lot about that. That was important for her to raise a strong daughter, um, that her mother taught her strength. And um, albeit in ways that I'm sure, <laughs> uh, you know, weren't always the best, but it was, that was the theme, and uh, she says, I've never met a woman who is not strong, but sometimes they don't let it out. Then there's a tragedy, and then all of a sudden the strength comes. My message is let the strength come out before the tragedy, and I, I really liked that one. Um, my favorite quote, I have just like, you know, a list of them, but <clears throat> she, you know, when she talked about... Um, you know, some of her mottos, you know, feel like a woman, wear a dress, like, oh, that that's nice. Um, attitude is everything. Become your own best friend. Be yourself. Be in charge of your own life. Don't blame others. Um, but I, I agree with Lauren when she said it's like, you know, talking to your grandmother, getting some wisdom from, from someone's experiences. And but there's one moment in the book that I don't I guess I didn't listen to it so I don't have a page number but there was the um, when she talked about being at some kind of conference and stepping into the elevator and not wanting to you know she usually checks her makeup in the elevator but deciding not to because the woman who was scarred um, from some type of violence against this woman her face was scarred so she didn't want to look in the in the um, check her makeup out of respect for her, but then the lady got in the elevator and looked directly at herself and just like I don't know for whatever reason that moment just really sticks in my mind in reference you know in the book like as a visual moment of a woman who was scarred who was like you know I'm this doesn't define me I'm still beautiful like that image sticks in my head so that's like one of the moments from the book that just sticks with me, like thinking about someone who's been scarred and they say that that's not going to, you know, I'm still beautiful, I'm still, um, I'm still powerful, I'm still worthy. And so I try to think about stuff like that because, you know, it's really tough being a woman. We, we, we judge ourselves, we judge, we judge each other. And so, you know, but just say like someone who had such a horrible thing happen to just you know, stare the you know stare the stare in the mirror and say no, I am beautiful. And so there's a little moments like that in the book that I appreciated. She brought up some little stories or situations like when she walked um, into her studio and she said that she felt this moment of her just walking down the corridor corridor to, um, and she just had this great moment where she felt powerful and strong as a woman because she owned this. Like, I, I like that she has those kind of memories because I'm sitting here, like, thinking about my life and thinking, okay, do I have any moments like that? Like, a moment where you, like, you walked in and you just, like, love the moment. You you were owning the moment. And I'm like, oh, and not that I can think of. So now I actually have that in the back of my mind. Like, I want to have a moment where I'm, like, feeling so great and I'm owning it. Like, I don't, I didn't even feel that way, like, wedding day. No, no day have I ever really felt that way. So now in my mind, I'm like writing that down. Like I want to actually have a moment like that where you're just walking in, you're feeling good, feeling your accomplishment, feeling the strength of your womanhood as you walk into a moment. So that was kind of like, um, you know, some of the moments from the book that, that I'll take away with me. I'm just going to kind of piggyback on you, Tabitha. I liked that. I liked the overall tone of, you know, like, women's empowerment, and, um, yeah, I thought about that, um, her just, you know, owning things, and she just was so strong and decisive, and even when, you know, it seemed like she was just kind of losing herself in a new relationship, she was just kind of even owning losing herself in a relationship, which, 
I mean, I can respect that. I, you know, she knew what she was doing, and she was committing herself wholeheartedly to, you know, whether that was the best decision for her at the time, like, you know, becoming the Stepford wife that, you know, the, that one man who I'm not going to remember who it was, you know, with the tweed jackets. And it's just so funny thinking about her doing that because, you know, she's such a, a fashion icon and seems like such a strong woman, but she fully committed to that. And although that's very different from how I am, I, you know, I thought that was respectable. Um, and I don't, I don't have a favorite quote because I listened and I listened at the beginning of the month and I had intended to do my homework this week and because I know I had booked, marked some things in Audible and I just didn't get to it, so sorry. But um, I think overall tone and then, you know, her mother's life lessons, I think, you know, the stuff about not blaming others um, for, you know, things that happened and, you know, viewing things as a missed opportunity. And there was something she said about fear that I'm not going to remember. Basically that, you know, like fear and giving in to fear um, is not an option. And I just, I, it was something along those lines because it just really kind of stuck with me. And I thought, uh, I just really, yeah, I just really liked that. Sorry, my mute button got stuck. <laughs> um, so I'm using my a new computer for the first time, so it's a little different, like keeping all the screens up at once. I'm used to a big screen. So Alexis brought up a really good point in the the questions. Is she said, how many princesses do you know that didn't live incredible and inspirational stories? You know, that's such a good point. You know. She said, what do we think about the fact that DVF had this extraordinary life and achieved so many great things, but was also really privileged? You know, she had that, and I think it's probably because of her early or years in life. You know, she had such a hustle because, you know, there's a lot of people who are born into privilege and don't quite have that hustle. And, you know, my mom always was worried about that with me. Like, she didn't want to give me too much because she grew up so... You know, she grew up in poverty, like, no way around it. So she was worried that I would, you know, not have that hustle because, you know, I, I didn't grow up privileged, but I grew up in, you know, a middle-class family, and, you know, I had things that she didn't have. And so she thought that really created her fire. But then having me, who's had, like, fire from, like, birth, you know, she's like, maybe it really isn't that correlated like I thought. So that's a really good point that Alexis made, and I'd love to know your guys' thoughts, you know. And the the chat, I'm reading all the comments, you guys, so I'd love to know your kind of thoughts, too. What what do we think about that? Because that's actually something I've thought a lot about throughout the course of my life. I was going to talk about that in relation to our next question. Do we want to move on to that one, just to kind of tie it all together? Or? Yeah, sure. So the next question, we don't have to, like, a lot of these questions kind of roll together, so we just kind of let it flow. And we don't have to stick to those questions. If the, usually a couple great questions like the one that Alexis uh, mentioned come up, so don't feel like we have to color inside the lines. But the next question, and I'll paste it in the chat box, is has this novel changed you, broadened your perspective? Have you learned something new or been exposed to different ideas? So that's the next question, so feel free to, to jump off from there, Katrina. So I was having that same like flip-flopping thought the whole time. Like She had even such, let me go back to the beginning. So the part at the very beginning where she's talking about her mother getting that picture of her taken in the magazine where she's dressed in that big coat and the picture's in the back of the book and, um, but yet at the same time she was in the Holocaust and she had to gain all of her weight back and all this stuff. So she, her mom kind of started from nothing and built up to something and then DBF was kind of just, not born into a charmed life, but definitely one where she had to work really hard when she was growing up, and she had all those expectations set by her mother, and just, like, this is how it's going to be. And at the same time, she still did have that fire to do something. I think she just was such a personality to begin with that I think regardless if she, like, married royalty and turned into a princess, I feel like she was going to do something anyway, but that's just where her destiny led her to go, which is great, but I mean, obviously, like, I would, it would have been wonderful for me to marry a prince, but that didn't happen, <laughs> so 
but that's <laughs> fine. And it's we're all just so my husband's scowling at me now. <laughs> but uh, we're all just so different, and personality is different, and drive is different. And it was interesting to hear from somebody who had such privilege and wealth, and yet commitment to what she was doing. And like she says, she had no idea what she was doing. She didn't have a business plan. She didn't know how to do inventory. She, did, she didn't know how to do anything. So it was interesting to hear her go after it again and again and again, trusting her instincts, but doing it anyway, like regardless of not knowing what they were doing. And that's something that I would probably not ever do. You know, that is a totally different way to do business. And eventually she did get it right, but like she says, she went through all these different people and finally found a good team that she trusted and that really helped her build it the right way. Um, but I, I definitely couldn't do that if I was building a big fashion merchandising business. I, I don't think I could just be like, we're going to make this many because it's a big boom and I'm not going to listen to what I say. I'm just going to make everything. So that part of it was interesting, just thinking about um, that's probably the different perspective that I, I didn't have um, on life, just kind of going for it and being okay with going for it. Um, I had another thought, but now I can't remember, so we can move on. I'll come back if I think of it. Uh, I I really appreciated how unapologetic she was about her lifestyle. You know, and there really is nothing to apologize for. Um, she was so privileged, and when she talks about their yacht and Barry spending three years um, designing and building it, and of course we would all love to go on the trips and vacations that she had, but this wasn't about her... Um, feeling guilty about you know the life that she led it was I guess which leads me to the biggest thing I really appreciated and got out of the book was how candid she was I don't I don't know any celebrities that were as candid um, in their memoirs really as she is in hers in the fact that she was unapologetic about maybe mistakes that she might have made or choices that she made and she owned them, and her honesty really inspired me. Um, and there is a quote, and not to go back to the other question about um, be who you are in public and in private, and and how she tries to be honest, and all of those things really um, felt like I don't know how to explain it. Just really resonated with me in that okay, own who I am, own who my faults, and find the good in that, and then you know, that it paves the way for success. So, I, again, I really appreciated how candid she was um, and also how unapologetic she was for her lifestyle. Yeah, I think the, the aspect of her, you know, being a princess, um, that's definitely interesting, and you definitely know there's lots of um, benefits. But I think about that if someone else were in her shoes, and they were a princess, that doesn't necessarily mean that they would have had success because I think it had to be about her and her personality. Like for these people to like her, feel engaged with her, wanting to take a chance on what her ideas were. So of course her, you know, being a princess, lots of opportunities, lots of wealth, being able to travel and, and get in the right circles that she needed to get into. But I think it was her personality and um there was something else about her that made the people say, okay, well, you know, we're interested in that. And also some of the things that she learned along the way. And um, she definitely did a lot of networking. Um, and I, I would say that it's, 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 it's really funny, but I think that she's inspiring in a sense that she was like, okay, I didn't have a business plan, but hey, I just jumped in there and, and did it. But I think that that's just her being herself, you know, just saying, this is how I feel. I'm going with my gut. And, and But she was, like you said, she was honest about some of those mistakes. But I think just thinking about some of those things will make you go, okay, well, it doesn't have to be a cookie cutter way to do a business. It doesn't have to be check all these boxes off and then just, you know, just jump out there, try it. You know, if it doesn't work, then change it up. But you have to have resources in order to do that. So I think that's kind of both of the things where you're like, okay, she can say that because she had the resources, but what about people who don't have resources? They can't say, hey, well, let's just jump out there and spend a whole lot of money on a business and then it fails. Um, so it's, it was definitely an interesting, you know, take on business. 
Um, but I definitely think that, you know, the whole princess aspect, you know, really helped her. But I think the personality part is what kept her. Yeah, I think, I mean, definitely, definitely a privileged life. And I think that led her in the direction she was in. And that was her safety net. But, I mean, if she was just relying on her privilege alone, the first time she failed, she would have just been done and, you know, just kind of given up and been like, well, ah, I lost all my money, I lost my business, whatever. But, I mean, yeah, it was definitely her personality and her work ethic that, you know, made her try again and again and, you know, make sure she really established her brand and, you know, the rebirth of DBF. Um, yeah. Yeah, so now I guess we'll kind of just, like, move into final thoughts, not that anyone needs to, you know, necessarily respond, but I really liked what Tabitha said, and it reminded me of a part that I really liked in the book where she talked about... I, what what did she refer to herself as? Like a tycooness? I just thought that was so funny. Does anyone remember that? Like a tycooness? Anyway, um, she talked about like walking out like in her fishnets and her heels and like you, I could like literally hear the heels like hitting the pavement, which is like one of my favorite sounds. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like you just like feel her conveying the strength in that of that moment, especially listening to it. So. I definitely think that's going to be my biggest takeaway is kind of like feeling the strength in, in the moments like, like Tabitha shared. I think that is, you know, you know, I don't, I'm like you, Tabitha, I don't, like, I don't, I, maybe in reverse I might think about like, wow, that was a really cool moment. Um, definitely have had some moments like that professionally where I'm like, yes, killed that. But not like in the moment, you know what I mean? And that's so important. It's easier to re enjoy things in hindsight, especially for me. I'm so, like, worried about, you know, performing and executing that sometimes I don't enjoy the moment. So, definitely, I think that that's such a, such a powerful thing that I'm going to take with me in, into my life. Anyone else have any final thoughts? I like how she, she mentioned that she wanted to have a man's experience in a woman's body. <laughs> so I was just like, okay. I guess, like, for that time period, that made sense. Like, she wanted that freedom, and then she was like, once she had kids, she was kind of like, oh, you know, that kind of, you know, she was honest about how that made her feel, but then she said, you know, but I love being, you know, being a mother. So it's like that whole aspect of, yes, I'm a woman, but there's aspects of a man's life that, you know, that I kind of want to have, just like you said, to be a boss or be in control or feel the freedom to just go and do and do whatever I want. Um, um, but that stuck in my head, like, okay, thinking about a powerful woman, like, like a man in a woman's body, having that kind of life. Yeah. Was any, um, I guess my, one of my final thoughts would be, was anyone else so impressed with Barry Diller? I mean, he has to be the most patient person on this whole planet. He was there through her cancer and her mother and there for her children and through her affairs and all of that. And that he wanted, he loved her unconditionally. I've never heard of a love story like that. And it was, oh, it was, that's romance. <laughs> that's true love right there. I mean, Barry Diller is pretty, one, one amazing guy. <laughs> Very cool. Alexis did have one final question, and uh, I think, Katrina, you may have just answered it, but it was, what other mentors besides her mother? Did she mention any other, like, muses or mentors that maybe we should be looking into? Alexis is like me in that we always kind of like to brush up on our on our girl power. So, yeah, that's a, that's a great question for the group. Yeah, so I just mentioned the uh, man that she worked with um, on the fabric blend of her original dress. She really, I felt like she really kept like repeating over and over in that section of the book that like he really helped her and he yelled at everybody all the time and he was really hard to deal with, but he really helped her business-wise like decide what she wanted to do as far as like what she could do and he was big into printing his own prints and things like that. So I think that, at least for me, is the one that I really remember her talking about the most? What do you guys remember? Anybody else? 
I love that she mentioned Angelina Jolie. I wouldn't have thought that that would have been someone that she admired as much as she kind of talked about in the book. And then when I heard her talk about it, it made me reflect on Angelina Jolie. And I think, you know, we always think of her, oh, she's married to Brad Pitt. She's got all these kids. She was called a homewrecker, all these things. But in reality, it's like she is actually a pretty inspirational person. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I forgot about that and how she created the DVF Awards and all the work she's done with the CFDA as far as like bringing fashion forward and humanitarian causes and things like that because she does talk a lot about that aspect of her life in the book as well. Perfect. So we are actually like right up on time. So we usually like to spend the first hour. Oh, Sarah's computer died. So Goodbye, Sarah. She left. She sent us a note saying she left her power cord at work. So I've definitely done that before. So <laughs> Sarah will be back next time. Um, so now, right up about the hour, we usually transition into the books to movies read. So I see in the comments there's lots of new paper and glam read it, readers. So we have one official read, which was the DVF book, and then we also have a book to movie read that we have um, each month. There's a book to movie selection. So this month was The Longest Ride, and I actually haven't read it, but I've heard from all of my friends that it's phenomenal and it's like the best thing Nicholas Sparks has done since The Notebook which I think most of us probably know the book is killer, the movie's killer I mean in... oh Sarah's back. Um, hey Sarah! Hi. <laughs> we were just transitioning to uh, books to movies so I haven't had a chance to read it and I'm not sure if um, you guys have had a chance to read it um, but yeah that's kind of what we what we do to close out and then any like random FAQs or anything else we want to talk about that's maybe not on the topic of it can be anything it's been like what color lipstick is Katrina wearing many times before so open forum we'll say <laughs> so I did read The Longest Ride and I also saw the movie um, I loved the book I don't read many Nicholas Sparks books but I feel after reading this one I feel like I need to like bang through all of them over the summer just because I can. Um, I really liked it. I I mean, spoiler alert, duh. I liked that the young couple doesn't die. I was not, I would not have been prepared for that. I would have just, I would have lost my mind, I think. So I really liked it. Um, I enjoyed the movie. I wish they changed the name of the bull in the movie from Big Ugly Critter to Rango. And I really wish they would have left it as Big Ugly Critter because I just thought that was really fitting and really cute and normal sounding. Well, weird sounding, but good for a bowl, I guess. Um, I really enjoyed it. The guy, I forget the actor's name that plays um, Luke in the movie is gorgeous, so staring at his face for two hours was, was a wonderful time suck for me. Um, so I really enjoyed it. It was a good read. I really loved the book. Um, I feel like it's one I would go back and reread again, and I enjoyed the movie as well. Mm -hmm. I didn't read it, <laughs> so I'm not going to comment, but I will say I do love Nicholas Sparks' book. It's not that they're, uh, they're just a really fun, easy read, and they're romantic, and um, so I'm excited to hear what you guys thought about the book. Well, this was my first Nicholas Sparks book, and I loved it. I loved it. It was great. I'm happy about the ending because I hate when books are great and then the ending is horrible. But this ending was great. Um, I like how they he he paired the um, the love story of the the older couple and then the love story of the the young couple. And I like that that he put them together because it just made it more sweet because you think more about you know like love beyond your you know your young <laughs> beyond your young years like love is you know goes beyond the ages and, and just how much that uh, I can't think of the old guy's name but how much he loved his wife and and how much he dedicated the you know the art collection to her and how he ends up getting the you know sorry about the spoilers but it's so great he's got to talk about it like how he ends up getting the art all the art collection because he chose the one photograph of Ruth I mean the one painting of Ruth and you were just like when I read that I was like yes <laughs> you get all the money you can save the ranch <laughs> um, so really you know a story that drew you in and and was love from all different angles and uh, it, was, it was a great read. Perfect. Well, I hope that maybe you discovered a new author because I loved The Notebook and A Walk to Remember. I read all the Nicholas Sparks books 
and I've seen the ones that were movies, and I definitely, A Walk to Remember is still one of my all-time favorites, and that came out in, like, high school, so it was so good. So, yeah, um, that's kind of the fun of book club is finding authors that maybe we haven't read before or, like, wouldn't pick up on our own, so Tabitha, you may want to check out those, too, if, if you haven't, because they are absolutely killer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Books I think Oh, sorry. I just keep talking over people tonight. Um... I really, I, so I didn't want to read it at all. I was like, I'm going to, but I downloaded it on Audible because I was like, I just don't, I don't want to read Nicholas Sparks because I had heard that, I loved The Notebook. I watched The Notebook when it came out and I didn't realize A Walk to Remember was Nicholas Sparks. Totally loved that movie in high school. Um, But I had heard that in the book for A Walk, no, for the notebook that they don't die together in the end and I was like that ruins the whole story I don't like Nicholas Sparks but I made myself listen to this one and yeah I am in the same boat as some of you others I need to like now I need to read everything Nicholas Sparks has ever written because it was just so cute and like such a like such a quick easy like I could, I mean, if I had picked up the book, I probably would have read it in one night kind of a thing. Like, it was just, it was super cute, and I loved the ending, and I just thought he, like, ended things terribly because of things I had heard about other books, and so, lesson learned, I will have to read some other ones. Yeah, they definitely aren't all created equal, in my opinion. There's some that are absolutely off the charts stellar, and then there's some that, most of them are pretty strong. Like, I wouldn't say that there's maybe you guys in the comments who are bigger Nicholas Sparks buffs than, than me. I, I know Cami said the lucky one was pretty good. And yeah, I agree. The lucky one was pretty good. The book and I was a little disappointed with the movie, but they're both they're both pretty good. Like, I would say A Walk to Remember and The Notebook are like phenomenal. And then I can't remember. There's a couple that are kind of a little bit slower. I know Safe Harbor was a little bit slow and the movie was, it was okay. But, um, they're all, you know, I don't think any of them are like, oh, that's such a waste of time. You know, I think, I think they, I think you'd enjoy most of them. I mean, it's a, it's like they're light friend reads. You know, they're feel good reads. I did hear that his memoir, though. A lot of my friends love Nicholas Sparks and read his memoir, and they said that is like almost impossible to get through just because he's had a very tragic life, which mm-hmm. I didn't know. Interesting. Did you like the wedding? The the Nicholas Sparks took the wedding. Anyone? I don't- I don't think I've read that one. Maybe I haven't read all of them. So it's kind of an, it's more obscure, I think. But I, if I remember it right, it's been years since I read it. It's almost like a sequel to the Notebook in that it deals with the kids um, of the original parents and and their wedding and their uh, life together. And like the swans are a reoccurring theme in it. And I remember liking that one a lot. It probably is not as strong as some of the others, but I liked it. I was wondering if anybody else liked that one too. I heard about it. Yeah, I don't think I read it, but good recommendation. I didn't know that there was like a kind of like a quasi sequel to the notebook. It's good to know. And I thought I'd ha- I actually thought I had all his books, and I don't have that one. Interesting. What else? Any other final book-to-movie read thoughts? Let's see. What was last month? Last month was Serena, which was the book was really good, in my opinion, but I didn't see the movie just because I think it's a little too dark for me. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be, like, just this this month. I, I'm not seeing The Longest Ride this weekend because I haven't started the book, but I am seeing Age of Adeline, so I'm really excited about that. If anyone else is going to go see that. So what about Vanity Fair? Oh, good point. I'm so glad you brought that up because I wanted to ask you guys because I know all of you, um, well, I'm not sure about you, Lauren. I think you're you're a new book chatter. So, yeah, what what should we do about Vanity Fair? I know, Katrina, you're finishing it up. Do we want to, I think there's such a small group. I mean, I don't mind doing a live chat. That doesn't, you know, bother me at all. I'm happy to do one. It'll be a small group. Um, I think it'd be fun if, like, Allison could join or maybe some of our, like, literature professors that are in the group, like Allison or Jessica, and I know I know Alexis knows Vanity Fair like the back of her hand. So um, yeah, I'm I'm down to do a live chat or like a private chat if there's um, folks that want to join. I'll definitely um, for those that are watching live and those that are watching in the future, I'll keep my eyes on the comments to see what you guys want to do, and and we'll kind of think about it. If you're still, fin- I know a lot of people I think are still finishing it up, and then 
the majority decided not to quite go the classic route. So yeah, definitely open to um, ideas, especially since this the next month's book term movie read is Far From the Madding Crowd, and that is also our quarterly classic. So we're kind of double dipping, which works out really well, especially if like you want to read other things or you know Brit Lit. If you're like me, and Brit Lit takes you a long time to like kind of savor and and get through. So. We may want to have like a separate chat for Far From the Madding Crowd. I'm not really sure. I know that um, Allison had said it, it's kind of dark, which is funny because the movie doesn't look dark at all. So, um, yeah, I don't know if we want to do – I'm open to your guys' thoughts, basically. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to talk about it So I love Becky. <laughs> yeah, I'm I mean, good, too. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I read Vanity Fair in high school, so uh, it's been, you know – 11 years, but uh, I could brush up on it, and I think it would, it's always a fun book to chat about. It really is. I'm totally in. I loved it. Okay, good. Yeah, so maybe we'll do a live chat, and if you guys are up for that, since I know our core really read, really kind of I, I don't even know, it churned through it, I guess. You know, it's definitely, that was a marathon of a book. So I'm, like, so proud of you guys because those are definitely, the quarterly classics are ones that it's, like, I feel like there's so many references to Vanity Fair and, like, modern culture and, you know, like, Alexis and I have talked about, and I actually have this on my website, which is funny, in, like, my library section, like, Clueless is, like, based off of Jane Austen's Emma, and there's just, like, so many different references in pop culture, mainly because a lot of writers who write, like, movies and write TV shows, like, are very well read, so it's, like, the Gossip Girl, for example, is a prime example, like, almost every episode had, like, an allusion to classics, and it's, like, I just can't let all that stuff go over my head, I need to be a well-read, a well-read girl over here, so, um, yeah, let's... And I'd love to know thoughts, so keep keep them coming in the comments. And then, um, if you're watching this in the future and you're leaving comments in the video, I think maybe we maybe we'll do like an extra live chat um, in in May sometime. What do what do we think? Maybe do that. See if a few. Uh, if anyone else wants to join who is not a regular book chatter, definitely email me or leave a comment below, and I'll definitely extend the invite to some of the other ladies in the Paper and Glam Book Club who aren't able to join on Thursday nights because I know like Allison and there's a few that have recurring, recurring Thursday night engagements. So we'll see maybe if we can do it on a different night and have like Jessica join and maybe Allison, maybe Brandy, and and some other folks that. Maybe Amber, who definitely worked through Vanity Fair, but um, aren't able to join Thursday. So I think that's a good idea, Tabitha. So what's with the pajamas, man? I'm the only one. I know, and I love your sheet pajamas. <laughs> I mean a robe. This is a robe. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we lost our kind of like pajama party. I kind of forgot. Um, we lost our pajama party theme. It was going to be a pajama party theme. I know. I don't think... I know Maddie, she, I sent her a notebook, so Maddie, you'll have to let me know in the comments if you got it, but she, she got a notebook for wearing pajamas and posting her picture on Instagram, so we can definitely bring that back if you guys want, make it a pajama party. I know it's early for, like, Sarah, some of it, some of us, it's, like, a little bit harder now that it's summer, because, like, it's not even dark yet for me, and I know that's true for Sarah, so, but I know, like, Alexis and Katrina, it's, like, it's, it's late, so, yeah, leave me your suggestions below if you want to bring back the pajama party because I'm definitely down to ha hand out some notebooks for, for cute pajama ensembles. Well, I, I just want to know for next time. So I, <laughs> I was keeping it up. I'm like, what, what's going on? <laughs> no, you look so cute. I think they're perfect. I love Tabitha. You're, you guys are all, you're like rock stars. It's so, I so appreciate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. Maddie, Maddie got her PJs. All right. Well, okay, so it looks like in the comments we want to do some PJs. So next time, I can already tell you, and I know that Alexis and I have already talked about this because she's going to be on for I Am That Girl, so she'll be joining us. We will definitely be handing out something for some pajama wearers. So next time we will wear our pajamas. Tabitha will be united in pajamas, and I'll be looking on Instagram and Twitter for hashtag paper and glam book club so I can see your pajamas and <laughs> hand out some more prizes. So make an executive decision on that right now. Okay. Anything else? What else did I forget? Anything? Hmm. Going once? Hmm. All right. Well, your pajamas are getting lots of love in the comments, Tabitha. Oh, thank you. Oh, they're so cute. And it's pink. 
Oh, we lost Tabitha. Oh, no, you're back. You're back. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. I really appreciate you taking the time to spend with us and Book Chatters for joining every week and making sure that they've read. And if you haven't read, of course, whether you're a book chatter or you're you're in the audience, feel free to join us and ask your questions like Alexis did or like I did. I got halfway through the book. So, you know, this is informal. So, yeah, thank you guys. So, so Alexis is pre-planning your pajamas. Perfect, perfect. All right, thank you guys so much for joining. And I am going to end the live chat, and I'll see you the last Thursday of the month. So see you in May for our discussion of I Am That Girl and Far From the Madding Crowd.